How you going everyone? Um, there's been some uh, requests to do some fragging videos and I uh, thought I'd kick off the year with some video about how to frag a uh, Corallomorphs, Rhodactus and Recordia. Uh, I won't do any Recordia today but um, the same sort of methods can apply to them. And um, I'll be running through all the tools that you need uh, the methods that I use, um, they may not be the methods that everyone uses, but they're the methods that work for me. And um, yeah, I'll so run you through the aftercare and everything involved in doing it. And um, yeah, so feel free to ask any questions at the end of the video or anything like that. And um, yeah, you'll see how we go. All right. All right, I'll start off with some of the tools we're using today. And I'll start off with uh, that is a huge fragging screen. Um, some of you may remember it from the women's reefing day at Gallery Aquatica last year. Um, it was a safety device, or still is, so you can frag underneath it um, and look what you're doing underneath this Lexan panel. Um, it's a bit over the top. I don't actually need it today, but it's going to serve as a purpose to rest my camera on so I can be hands-free and work under here and show you exactly what I'm doing. All right, the uh, next thing over here is the corals we're gonna be working with. Um, we have some green Rhodactus, two little bluey purple Corallomorphs and a red Corallomorph there. And we have also a, another little bucket of natural seawater, well, out of my tank, so aquarium water as a dip which will be a coral dip solution and um, this is the dip solution that I'll be using today um, for post fragging it's Seachem reef dip and it's exactly what it says a coral disinfectant it's iodine based and it's used for post fragging to stave off any infections that you might induce um, which will cause your corals to melt which is never a good thing um, over here we have some aqua vitro bone cutters which will be used for cutting the rock that the corallomorphs are attached to. Some ME coral glue, it's an excellent super thick, well it says extra thick there, um, coral glue, I use it a lot. We have a scalpel and a razor blade and they're both used for cutting the um, soft tissue of the corallomorphs and rhodactus. Uh, some rubber bands, some coral rubble, which is just broken up base rock, a larger piece of base rock, some frag tiles, and some frag tiles in a little container, neatly fitting in there, some scissors, and some onion net or orange bag, which I'll explain to you that later. All right, let's get started. All right, the fragging. Uh, we'll start with these uh, green Rhodactus here. Uh, someone asked me the other day uh, how to detach morphs or Rhodactus ricks from a rock. Um, it's not something super commonly done, but um, I guess if you want to move them off a rock or share them around with friends, it could be something you want to do. So um, I'll detach one of these small ones here. Um, you basically just slide the scalpel just underneath there, and they have a little adhesive foot, and you can just peel them straight off. So it's quite easy. Um, the reattachment process is just as easy as that. Um, you will then, you've got um, the, uh, I just wrecked those before, but they were all in there quite nicely, as you've seen. Um, but you can put those, that little morph in there with a little bit of the um, aquarium water. You can drop that down in there. It doesn't matter if it lands the wrong way up because it will sort of attach to one of those pieces. Um, so you can use frag tiles or you can use some of the, um, the coral rubble over here that I showed you earlier. Um, it's all gonna do the same thing. And um, at that point, we use a piece of the onion bag and um, so you'd cut a little piece off, stretch it over the lid and then get one of the rubber bands and put it around the lid and that'll just stop it blowing out, stop any fish from picking on it and you replace that back in your aquarium and um, allow the morph to attach itself to one of the tiles which then you can move on to anywhere and be um, knowing that it's safely attached to something. Alternatively, I'll just take this uh, morph back out of that. Um, the other way to do it, I've 
dropped the little morph somewhere. There it is on the scalpel. There we go, landed safely on that. Um, the other way around it is to get a uh, piece of the coral rubble, put it shiny side up. Again, cut yourself a little piece of the onion bag and um, stretch it just over the morph like so. Not too tight, just enough to stop it rolling around. This is a very small um, demonstration. Um, usually the um, specimens would be a little bit bigger, but um, cut that and put the rubber rubber band around that and uh, in about two weeks time, it will attach um, to that. And the same goes for if you're using the cup method with rubble or frag tiles, in about two weeks, it'll be attached. Um, so yeah, and then you just replace that back in your aquarium or a low flow area as well. Um, and um, it might be helpful to use a bit of the Seachem reef dip or something like that um, at this point because you have disturbed it. It's not technically a frag, but it might just help. It can't, it can't be a bad thing, so um, you might as well give it a go. Um, nextly, we're going to frag one, and um, I'll use this red one here as an example. Um, it's got some nice little pink spots on it. Um, so what you're gonna do is straight through the mouth there, there's a little uh, mouth right in the center. Um, going, let's see that squirt there? That's why you wear safety glasses and gloves. If that stuff gets in your eye, you're gonna have a bad time. So straight through there, and you've made the cut. Then with the bone cutters, and just crunch the rock in between. Oop. That is a really tough rock. Or I didn't have Wheaties this morning. No, nah, it's a really tough rock. It's really not playing the game for me today. <laughs> Got it. All right. So there is two. Um, at that point, you definitely need to use the reef dip now because we've caused quite a lot of trauma to that. It's got all of its mesocentral filaments, which are its gut lining. Everything is just hanging out there. It has essentially been ripped in half. Um, so there is a chance of infection setting in. So you would put that into the dip bucket for five minutes in here. Um, that would just sit in there. Um, and then you would go about attaching them to a um, frag tile, so, or you can do the attachment to the frag tile first, which we'll do now just to save time in the video. Um, these frag tiles have been pre-soaked in water, uh, and that's to allow them, when you put glue on them, the um, air bubbles form under the glue and it looks unsightly, plus the glue sticks a little bit better to a wet tile. So I'll um, grab the um, ME coral dip, no, coral glue, We'll put a little bit on the tile, like so, and glue it shiny side up. Make sure that's set in there quite nicely. And um, if a little, sometimes just dipping it in the, uh, in the water will help just set that glue off, but this glue is a particularly sticky one to start with, so um, you aren't really gonna have any issues with it falling off. It's quite a good glue. And now at that point, it would definitely be going into the um, reef dip iodine-based stuff for the um, to control any infections. And that is uh, ready to go on your frag rack or back in your aquarium somewhere. Uh, in place of a frag tile, if you don't like the look of them, you can use a little piece of base rock. Um, it looks a little bit more natural, but um, I like these as well because they um, fit in uh, frag trays. Thanks right. for watching everyone and um, yeah, let us know what sort of videos you'd like to see or where I could possibly add some extra info to that. Um, I don't want anyone to be left behind um, if I'm going to make these videos. I'd prefer everyone to be um, coming out of them on the same level. Um, so yeah, if I've not explained something then um, yeah, definitely um, let us know and I'll um, recap it or explain it in comments. Alright, thank you. Happy reefing.